Okay, looks like we're we're live here. Um, so thanks everyone out there for um, for joining us again. This is um, Wayne Schultz with Ettore Products. I have with me Mike Warway from Detroit Sponge, and also Chris Ray, a uh, a window cleaning giant in Napa, California, right now. So all of you that are interested in Napa wines and what's going on in the Central Valley, we can definitely fire those questions off to Chris as well. Um, so, you know, again, um, you know, these, these video chats, I guess, are, are th that we're having here really is just to kind of get to know each other, obviously ask questions for those of you that have questions in the industry, but um, it's really kind of our goal is to just kind of, you know, in this, in this weird time that we're in where nobody can really go anywhere, but we can do video or YouTube or, or look at websites or things on our phone, it's kind of good to faces with names and, and different things. So for all of you that have been dealing with Detroit Sponge for all these years, now you get to meet the, the man at the helm, which um, is a great guy in Detroit. So um, I, I'll kind of start um, just again, for those of you that are that are maybe new to this whole thing, but you know, Ettore Products, um, you know, most of you know the story basically, but company founded in 1936 by a man, Ettore Stacconi imported from or immigrated from Italy. Um, basically, as a window cleaner, didn't know what else to do. So we went around washing windows. And like most window cleaners out there that you're kind of staring at a reflection of yourself all day. And all you're doing is thinking about the world around you and how you can do your job better. Um, came up with some ideas of ways he could improve. Went to suppliers. You weren't around in 1936, Mike. I know it was pretty close, but um, not you personally, but your company, <laughs> um, and and you know went to suppliers and and they weren't really interested in hearing any of this stuff. And long story short, he basically invented the squeegee as we know it, and it it's patented. We actually have the patent in our office, and um, you know it, it's several generations later. It's now in the third generation. Ettore's grandson is running our company at this point. Ettore's daughter still in customer service, very family oriented, and. Um, that's, you know, it, our tagline, I guess, as we have it is, is Ettore Stacconi was a window cleaner and he made products for window cleaners. And we still stand by that today, 86 plus or 87 plus years later. Um, we still basically do that. And Mike, I know you have a very similar story in your business. Um, so I don't know, why don't you spend a minute and kind of share that with us? Sure. Thanks, Wayne. Great to be able to be with you guys today. It is kind of weird with the whole virtual connection for sure. Um, but as an old school company, we know that changes continue to come. I am a third generation owner of a business, uh, third generation. My uncle's father started the business back in about 1939, 1938. And he was an immigrant from Greece and he would actually sell only sponges and chamois. And he was uh, just into selling that. I actually worked full, for, full time at Ford Motor Company and sold the sponges and chamois kind of in the evening. Back then, it was a more common item for households. And then as my uncle got involved in business, they expanded and started seeing a lot of window cleaners and picked up lines like the Ettore line. And from, from then on, we've really, uh, we still saw a lot of sponges into some commercial segments, but we really are more of the window cleaning supplies is where we're at now. I started working in the business when I was 13, kind of working alongside my uncle. Didn't really have any designs on going into it, but then uh, through a couple of conversations when I was at that ripe age of about 20, uh, decided that this was going to be a fun adventure. And my uncle approached me, we, we uh, transitioned, and uh, we've been going for, uh, I've owned the business now for about 24 years, about, yeah, about 24 years. So we're coming up on 25. And uh, because of great companies like Ettore and great quality products, we've just really enjoyed and embraced the relationship with contractors who are looking for the best quality product to really innovate things. And it's been an absolute blast. It continues to be a blast. The best part for me is getting to know the customers, hearing their stories and kind of the way that the world is uh, really enhanced by window cleaners as small business owners just out there to, to improve the world's view and um, brighten people's days. I mean, it's really what it comes down to. So. Yeah. No, that's good. So, so do you still sell a, a lot of chamois and sponges? Is that still, because that's a question we get a lot. Sure, sure. We do still sell a decent amount of chamois, nowhere near like it used to be. Same thing with the natural sponges. You know, you remember back, well, you don't remember, but back in the 50s, you're not that old, right? But in the 50s and 60s, a natural sponge was one of the 
basic cleaners for houses because you could actually boil them to sanitize them. So you could boil, there's even uh, the old Beverly Hillbillies episode, a natural sponge made it into that, that uh, show a few times because mm. she was boiling the sponge one time and Jethro ate it. So it was, uh, you know, it's been around for a long time. And back then it was more culturally that that was what we did because it was at least uh, able to be sanitized. And then uh, now the sponges aren't so much, but they're still all hand fished uh, by fishermen that go off the, the ports of different parts of the world. And they bring in sponges and we still bring in quite a few thousand, you know, a year of sponges directly from the fishermen. But it's not as big of a part of our business. Now we specialize more into the tools with the uh, contractors. So okay. No, yeah, that's awesome. So this is why I love doing this kind of thing is that, you know, I've known you for 15 years now, almost 16, and I didn't know you had a Greek heritage. So that was actually, that was fun for me to, to well, learn. I, and I'm actually not Greek, but my, my uncle is Greek. So it yeah. was my, so it's by marriage, but it's, you know, it's okay. It's a, it's definitely yeah. the sponge business part of it is still really heavily uh, involved with the Greeks because they were from the islands there of Greece and Kalimnos is one of the islands where the sponge diving really started happening and that's where it started at um, pre-world war ii they actually imported some divers into tampa to be able to uh, have them for military use and that's kind of where the sponge business took off in tarpon springs and you can even catch a mike Rowe episode about natural sponges where he goes out with one of the divers that we actually buy sponges from and it's a funny episode he goes out yeah. and searches the amazing buttless sponge so it's yeah yeah, I guess so. I'll, I'll throw a plug for Mike as well. He's he's done a few segments on our company as well, and uh, just a great guy. But um, yeah, those Very are funny guy. Those are some fun, um, some fun things. Um, and Chris, um, so again, we we have a guy live out in in Napa at this point. Actually, he he was just describing. He's got a fairly large home he's doing, and then um, right after this, going out to do another one. Why don't you introduce yourself and? Tell everybody what, what you're up to and, and what's going on out in Napa. Well, I definitely don't have a history like you guys tracing all the way back to the 1930s. Uh, my story started in about 2010. And... Uh, my wanted to start something new and then uh, we a little more uh, guaranteed and uh, about three years ago we took the plunge into uh, actually starting our own business license and ever since then it, it's it's Yawville, St. Helena, Calistoga, American Canyon. We, I pretty much travel anywhere being a sole proprietor and so I do hope to one day hand this over to my children and let them kind of let them kind of take the reins and see what they want to do with it but again I made sure that I uh, explained to my wife they needed to go to college before I needed them anything so oh, that's, great. that's my it's my story it's nothing crazy I mean again uh, in Napa it's been a beautiful thing I've traveled I've cleaned windows and LA, Arizona, San Diego, Napa, San Francisco. I've cleaned windows almost everywhere. And so it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful industry to be in. And especially if you're an owner operator, uh, I, I, I have no complaints whatsoever. I mean, I love everything I do. I mean, you guys can see around. You know, I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and it's just a beautiful thing. The, the homeowner's house that I'm at right now, they sit on 25 acres. They've got horses running around. I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful, a beautiful industry to be a part of. And, I mean, if I can hand it to my kids and they can eventually have a story to tell, then let's do it. Yeah, no, that's, that's, and that's kind of what this industry is all about is people like that all over the place. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. We got a, a couple of questions here. I'll just kind of fire them out there. Um, we get this one almost every time we do anything, which is what is the correct pronunciation of Ettore? So Mike, just because I've said this so many times, I don't even want to hear myself say it anymore. Why don't you answer that question? I, I'm not the authority. If someone talks to me long enough, I will probably pronounce it about three different ways in one conversation. Because I <laughs> remember why we get the question. I, I, I remember the old days of Ettore, Ettore, there were different pronunciations to it. So you 
you uh, you lead the charge on this. How is the correct pronunciation? Sure. Yeah. Um, so so that um, remember that that um, I'm kind of giving it away, but you know, Ettore Stacconi was the founder of our company. It's an Italian first name. So if you are in Italy and you speak Italian, which I am not and do not, so I am as 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 I don't even speak English well. So um, you know that's part of it. But um, it, it's 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 pronounced Ettore in Italian. Um, and that's what the, the that's not, I wouldn't say a thick, heavy accent, but that's the accent that you, that you get with it. Um, Diane, Ettore's daughter, literally, we have this discussion all the time. We've had people argue with her. No, 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 it's a Torre, it's a Torre. That's how you say it. And she goes, well, we didn't say that in our house. We call them Ettore. So I'm going with Diane. And so we, we pronounce it Ettore. Although, like you said, we hear all kinds of different things. A Torre is probably the second most common um, thing that we've heard. We've been called Etor. We've been called lots of different things, but at least around here, we pronounce it Ettore. So that's that's uh, the, the think, thing that's I think, there. I think a good lesson out of that is that you really don't argue with the Italian matriarch. Yeah. He says it's a certain way. It's just a certain way. That's it, it is. And, and if anybody knows Diane, and you do, but um, you just don't argue with her. That's mm -hmm. it's, uh, you'll lose, but um, you know, that's, that's, that's uh, and that's a good thing. Um, so I have another one here. Um, hello from France. So um, must be, I don't know, four o'clock in the morning there. Thank you for paying attention. Um, I've been looking for Ettore products for a long time, especially the super channel. Where can I find a reseller in France? Um, I can, I'm not going to do that here because going down through distributors, it's, this is kind of a broad audience. So I will, respond to you privately um, on Facebook so we can respond to that. Um, and then um, another question we have is where do we see ourselves? And this could apply to you as well because the industry is part of it, but I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Where do we see ourselves in five years regarding product innovation? And um, it's, it's a good question. Um, and, and I don't, I honestly, in the scope of this climate, I'm not sure anybody can even think five years ahead right now, but um, you know, basically what I can say, because, you know, you're third generation, you've been doing this for 24 years. We've been 86 years, a um, couple years more than you, but not, not too much. I've been here 15, you've been here 24. Um, this industry doesn't have, you know, it's not like we're going to reinvent a new handle that's going to revolutionize the world tomorrow. Um, not to say that couldn't happen, but, but in general, that's window cleaning. There's a way to clean glass well. And, and, and all of it involves someone doing that. There's lots of ideas out there about, you know, automatic, you know, robots and things that do it. And there are some out there that, that they have. And thankfully, none of them work very well. <laughs> so, um, you know, I know you're laughing. You may have some things to say that. So the, the way I would answer that is, is you know, labor, safety, um, it's saving time and, and maximizing money basically would be the drivers in this industry. I don't know if you agree with that or not, Mike, but, um, um, and you, you'll have your shot in a second here. You can rebut me if you want, but um, the, the, what I see the next five years is, is, is literally looking for ways where, where, you know, people are going to be wanting to be cleaning and we're going to adapt to whatever that is. I mean, Pure water, for example, what you have in your background there is kind of been, I don't want to say it's been driving the industry, but it certainly has been steering things for the last few years anyway. That's part of that. And, and you know, you kind of adapt to that marketplace. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So pure water will definitely be in there. Tools that um, require there, there may be in the next five years, some different kinds of glass available that, that we have to figure out how to clean. Um, solar panels were a big jump for a little while. That's kind of slowed down a little. So what's the next new solar panel? So in general, we're in the industry to help people out there clean windows. And we make tools to do that. And, and we will continue to make tools to do that. And the best ones for the market that are there. As far as specifics, I, you know, five years, I, I couldn't even begin to guess. But I mean, it's um, we. what I can tell you is we will be here I'm pretty sure you're going to be here um, and making the best products out there that are there and, and, and people will be able to make a good living using them to, to use those products. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. 
Well, I think just a real quick add on to say that uh, I view that the, uh, the future of the business is really strong because every architectural structure, whether it be a house, a building or whatever, the glass and the use of glass is only getting more sophisticated and more complicated and it can't be cleaned by regular people. It needs a specialist, it needs a professional. Um, and even now with the trend of people working at home, there's just all sorts of new opportunities that come out of changes to the marketplace. One thing that I've continued to love and admire about the window cleaning industry is that so many innovations come from people like Chris that are out there in the field and they kind of tweak something and they innovate something. And I think of the super system handle and how Ettore was so big in supporting and creating that and working with window cleaners. And uh, the industry from the ground up really does innovate. And I think that's a lot of fun to be a part of. And you never know quite what's going to bubble up. The pure water is definitely the thing now that's the big innovation, but people still need to clean windows interior and there's not a machine for that. Um, and still labor is needed and expert technicians like somebody like Chris that's washed windows for so long. The techniques are so flawless that it's, uh, it's phenomenal washing fully developed window cleaners wash windows. Um, so for me, the future of the business itself, the industry is great. There'll be the distribution challenges and all that type of stuff. But as long as the professionals continue to demand that the quality is good, that supports companies like Ettore, that the quality in the U.S. manufacturing when possible is really the demand of the day. And uh, as long as that's there, the contractors are always going to want the top-notch tools. And I think that there's more glass than ever. So I think there's going to be a lot of great days ahead. I think our best days are still coming. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. And and every time you think you've seen it all, the next Monday comes along and it's like, wow, I didn't see that one coming. And, and I think we're sitting in that right now, actually. <laughs> like well, I never would have predicted. So you've seen the buildings and the architecture and the creativity that's there from everywhere. And you say, like, even when you talk about glass surfaces or different types of glass that are coming, they're all going to need to be maintained. It's all based upon the clarity. So it's I think it's good. And Chris, you know, guys like you, you got to keep your skills sharpened and be aware of the new trends in the marketplace with glass surfaces. We're trying to, to educate customers here as much as we can from feedback. When the self-cleaning glass came out and hit the market, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, lots of questions from people all of a sudden, oh my gosh, can you scrape it? How do you do this? How do you do that? And things like that are going to continue to innovate and we'll see what the market bears out. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of innovation and we'll, we'll all adapt to it. So we talked a little bit about Waterfed. Why don't we just jump into that? Because you know you kind of have it in your background, and 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 let's kind of do that. So um, one of the questions I have um, on here is is can you talk about Ettore Waterfed poll options? Um, we'll we'll definitely get into that. And being that we have a question, we'll start there. But um, and then just getting into obviously the pure water, which is you know we're going to talk about the Easy One Pro, which is right behind you as well. So on the polls. You know, Mike, and, and again, I, any input you have on top of this as well, but, you know, when, when you're manufacturing a pole, you know, we spend a lot of time talking to people like Chris and window cleaners all over, going out on job sites with them, watching them do their jobs, figuring out what's going on. And obviously we do a lot of work here as well to, to determine the, the focus. And a little history about Waterfed and the poles in general. The, the Waterfed is not new technology. It probably became mainstream probably in the early 80s, maybe even earlier than that, um, started kind of bigger in Europe because they, in certain parts of it, they banned ladders. And so the only way window cleaners could do anything was on longer poles. And then they came up with, how do you do that? You can't really get on a squeegee and a scrubber if you can't get to a window. So that's kind of where that all started. And just to down and dirty with the poles, you know, they, poles are, you know, that's an extension pole. You you want to get your brush or whatever you're doing higher up the side of the building or the glass, and you need a pole to do that. And, you know, originally they were all aluminum, probably even before that it was steel. I'm not sure, but, um, you know, they all started and, you know, every, every one of them has um, opportunities and challenges of, of doing it. And just to kind of get to the evolution of where we are now, um, a pole is a compromise. It's, you know, you want to make the pole be as rigid as possible for as long as it can be. So if you've got a really long pole, 65 feet, let's say, um, that's going up the side of the window, you want to make that as rigid as possible so you don't have to stand three blocks away and have it arc and try to, to scrub it around and blow in the wind. You know, you want to do that. But to make it rigid, typically you have to make it heavy. 
well, you don't want to make it too heavy because then you can't lift it and you're exhausted and you hurt yourself and do the other stuff. So poles in general, just for everybody, it's a compromise between weight and stiffness. And so the Adore poles that, you know, there's one of them right behind you there, Mike, that, um, you know, it's, it's, we're using um, basically, you know, and I don't want to get too detailed on this because we're not getting so technical, but high modulus carbon fiber, which is, it's just a, a, the carbon fiber is fiberglass, but it's, it's a certain strand. The high modulus is just a lighter version that's lighter and stronger. Um, that's part of that. And the whole pole from the bottom, except, except for the aluminum protective thing, which we'll talk about as well, but the whole pole is that carbon fiber. So it's as strong as it can possibly be and as light as it possibly can be without compromising um, rigidity and weight. Those are, those are basically the two things. The clamps that are on them, again, Mike's working with it, but they're designed not to catch on anything. They lock positively. If you're sliding it down a window, you're not going to catch it on a windowsill because it's got tapered pieces of it. Um, they lock completely positive, so you can't catch it on a tree branch or you know something out there that that's part of that, and then collapse on you. And then you know all the way down to the the aluminum gold part that's that's right there. Um, that does two things because it's high modulus carbon fiber. Um, having that full thing, it tends to be a little more expensive. Um, that's why those kinds of poles are expensive. So the the um, aluminum tube that we put on the bottom does two things. One, it, believe it or not, it is actually make, because that's a fatter part of the pole that has more carbon fiber on it. it that would be pretty expensive as a piece. So it's, it's cheaper because it doesn't really add or detract from any of the rigidity of it. It's about the same weight. And it also protects the expensive carbon fiber underneath it. So when you have it in your truck or your car or drop it on the street or whatever, if you damage it, it's really inexpensive compared to what you'd have to do if you replace the pole. So, I, you know, again, I could go on for another hour, but you'd be bored to death. So I, you want to add anything to that, Mike, at all? I, I do. I think that, you know, there's a glutton of uh, poles out in the market now. So you always look at the differentiating factors. And with the Adderay pole, you can tell, of course, the aluminum section in the bottom is unique. And then, uh, you know, and, and moving around with the clamps and things, there's almost an anti-pinch feature to them as well. Sometimes the poles will come slamming down and, if you know, watch, you can pinch your hand and that's, these are your money makers. So you never want to hurt. It's very them. painful. <laughs> so they, the, your engineers have wisely designed the little teeth here that kind of stick out that make it to where when it pops down, you really, there's not a big chance that you're going to get pinched there. And I like the way that the collars hold. So these poles are, you know, they're a, they're a great addition to the marketplace for sure. Um, the poles are a big part of the the discussion, uh, and but they're just they're just the poles, you know. So the name with that array, the the thing that you always get with the bigger, more established manufacturers are the parts and the things that happen. Because we, as Chris probably can testify, you're out there on the job site, you think you've heard it all, and then a worker walks up to you and says, "Well, but this was I didn't." Ah, I don't know. And, and you go, how did that happen? And you look at your pole and, and three things are broken that you thought would never be broken. Right. Uh, you know, and for owner operators, maybe that doesn't happen. They can have one pole and make it last forever. A lot of guys will hang on to their first squeegee that they had in their owner operators. But as you have crews and you're sending people out on the jobs, it's amazing what a, a fall from a height will do to something. So yeah. poles yeah. and support are a big part of it. You know, the other part of the brush and the way that it all connects and everything is all pretty standard stuff now. The URA style is to have a Euro thread at the top. And, uh, but, you know, it's a nice pole and it's it, the, the, even the little things of even the cap at the bottom is designed so that the hose can feed through and there's a nice rubber bumper to it, which makes it nice for being able to set it down without pinching the hose. So, you know, the, the little unique features of poles as you compare things back and forth makes a big difference. But that's just the pole portion. For the water, the purification portion, really, Ettery has put some energy and um, design behind doing a total DI system that just uses the deionizing resins to purify the water. So if you're in an area of the country where your TDS is really below about 200, this can be a great choice for you. Really low maintenance, easy to pull out and use, easy to swap out the resin. I'm a big fan of DI only systems but you do need to be aware of what your TDS is in your area. And if you're mm -hmm. in one of those areas, a lot of parts of Arizona, whatever, where the TDS is coming out of the groundwater, TDS meaning total dissolved solids, 
coming out of the groundwater is up at three, four or 500 parts per million, that's uh, going to work your DI real hard and you're going to go through a lot of resin. Sure. So the resin that's inside here is really well designed so that it contacts the water as it goes through and has a good dwell time to it. And it really does a great job of stripping the particulate off the water as it passes through. Yeah. We'll delve into that in just a no, second, no, a little no, bit no, deeper. No, but Chris, no, um, you know, you've obviously, you know, we've we've uh, worked with you a little bit on on the uh, Easy Pro, Easy, Easy One Pro system and the poles and all that. And water fed in general, as somebody who's actually using it day to day on your job, you have anything you want to add regarding water fed systems and particularly our poles or or maybe something that you think might need to be improved? That would be okay too. No, I, I don't think that anything needs to be improved. I really think this one's been, I think this is the, the top of the line up from a 35 foot aluminum pole, which was 10 pounds. Now I use my uh, aqua pole and I'm at 45 feet fully extended and I'm at, I believe, seven pounds. And so there's nothing I could change. The question I do have is, will you guys ever go into the market of a rinse bar for the top of the pole or for the top of the brush? Would you guys ever get into the market of a rinse bar on the top of the bar, uh, pole? Sure. Yeah, um, it's a good question. Um, and, and it goes back to that original thing in the next five years, what are we going to do? And the answer is, you know, we, we are looking at all of those things. We've got prototypes in here that that wash everything, you know, I'm um, yeah. doing whatever. And, you know, the, obviously it's a compromise between price, what the market will show and, and that sort of a thing. And, and um, to answer your question, I guarantee you we're going to have something that has a larger rinse portion um, for, because there are definitely jobs that require more water flow on there than just your regular, you know, like on our, our 14 inch brush, there's two, water jets that shoot out on the 18 inch one, there's four. But in some cases, you actually need a lot of water flow and throw it over the top of that, which um, yeah, this goes back to the me, um, let's go back to the, the easy one pro um, item, you know, that's part of that. And again, this, this is a compromise. We've had many systems, Mike, you know that you've sold probably all of them that we've had at one point or another. And we've, we've basically just kind of filtered down to, no pun intended, but down to just making it simple because pure water systems, you know, Mike, and I know you sell a ton of them. you got, you know, charcoal canisters and RO things, and there's two canisters there and then a DI, and then you have a feedback tube and sometimes there's tanks. And sometimes, you you know, I don't know if you sell it anymore, but you have the, the truck mounted version, which has like a tank that you put in these things. And, and we are spending so much time in customer service, just, trying to educate people what these systems do and why they do what they do and how they clean. And, and everybody would call up and go, no, you're plumbing it wrong. I plumbed it this way. And then, you know, three months later, they'd call back, my system doesn't work anymore. And then we'd have to help them replumb it. You know, you're laughing because I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, so basically, you know, what, what we've opted, opted to do is, is just make it as simple as possible. I mean, pure water you know, there, there's a lot of different names for it out there. Every company has their own little brand marketing thing that they that they call them. But but in general, the way I like to describe it is, you know, down on the bottom on that unit. I'll just if you want to point it out, Mike, that you know it's got the where the water goes in, and that's basically a hose. It could be from a well, a, a garden spigot. It could be from a truck thing. It could be from whatever you want it to be. But that's where the what we call the dirty water goes into the tank there. And at the top, it you literally have the the little the little teeny hose coming out. That's where the clean water comes out. And honestly, that's it. There's no other thing that's in there. There's a you know you don't need to show it at this point, but there's a there's a TDS meter. It doesn't tell you what the actual parts per million are, but it gives you a red light and a green light. And you know again, I, I don't want to call it idiot proof. So that's not what we mean at all. But it's like instead of worrying about because we ha we have people like you, you mentioned that. You know, where are you? And you're in Arizona, are you in Texas, are you in Connecticut? Are you in the UK? Are you in whatever? You know, I, I, I'd love to say that I know all of that, but I don't know what the parts per million are all over the world. And so the, the meter was basically a simple thing. When it gets to a level where it's, it's filtering 
dirty water back through the TDS meter, it flashes red, which means you need to change the particles. So literally you plug in the dirty water, you know, from the hose, you connect your, your pole hoses and, and on that particular unit by itself, just sitting there like it is, it'll run two poles up to 65 feet each. Very few systems will actually do that. Most of them require a secondary pump if you have more than one pole. Um, that's part of that. It'll feed both poles. Um, we're not necessarily recommending men, uh, re recommending this, but we've had a lot of questions like, can you run a, a pressure washer off of that? I know you probably had that question as well, Mike. And, and um, you know, and our answer is it was never meant for that. It, it's um, the water, the water will go through that. So we actually went out to a plant that did that and went, okay, well, we'll, we'll donate the resin. Let's try it. And believe it or not, it did. 3,000 PSI pressure from a, from a pressure washer cleaned the side of a building with pure water. It chowed through the resin, as you can imagine, but it, it did work. So, I mean, even that kind of pressure will work with this particular system. And, and the, the point of that story really was more, it's simple. There's, there's not a whole lot to it. When, when the red light flashes, you take at this point, a, you know, a couple of bolts off the top that are hand tightened, you pull the bag out, all of that's on our website, it's on your website as well. You pull the bag out. You can buy the bag directly from us pre-done through you, or you can sell them the resin directly. And I know you sell that resin directly as well. So there's, there's a million ways to make this simple for the window cleaner. And that was the point of the Easy Pure system, um, or I should say the Easy One system um, that, that's basically there. And I, you've been you've been selling that for for a while. I mean, do you have any feedback directly that that uh, you know? I mean, people people say that it performs well. They like the uh, ruggedness of the unit because there's no plastic to it. It's all contractor grade, I guess you'd say. I see Chris is shaking his head, so he must have enjoyed that feature for sure. And um, you know, at some point, it is an in and out process. You put one water in one side, and you bring out other water out the other side. So it really comes down to what works best for your setup. Uh, this one has wheels. It's about 50 pounds when it's dry. I know we had that question too, of how much it weighs. It's about 50 pounds when it's dry. And once you get the water in there, it's gonna top out more like probably 60. Yeah. Uh, would be, be a guess. And, um, but you know, overall it's, it's, people like the ruggedness of it for sure. Yeah, sure. No, yeah, I mean, it's stainless steel housing. I mean, it's not, it's, you know, you're not going to break it. You're, you might dent it if you dropped it far enough or whatever. Right hard enough, you could do something to it, but you really have to try. Yeah, no, you would. Yeah, it probably could even run over it, although I'm not suggesting that. It would that's, have to uh, involve a fall off of a truck, probably. So that, and that does happen. But. Oh, no, quite, quite often. Um, uh, one question that came through on here is, can the user select a threshold on the meter for the Easy Pro? And um, the one that it comes with, the answer to that is no. Um, it's just a simple, simple thing. And to be honest with you, off the top of my head, I don't even know what the threshold is for when it says it's dirty. Um, it, it's it's probably somewhere around 10 parts per million, but because um, that's kind of a general thing. However, um, it's a pretty standard thread size. You could actually put a different TDS meter on it very easily um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to get that specific of, of what's there. But the, you know, Going back to the point, the point was to make that as simple as possible without, you know, causing issues like, okay, well, in this region, safe is 100 parts per million, but in this region, safe is 50. It's like, instead of doing that, it, let's just stick with a, it's, if it's green, use it, it's good, you're, you're fine, you're ready to go, and just makes things pretty simple. Um, uh, got, got a thing in here, um, Chris, if you want to how has the Easy One Pro improved your operations as a window cleaner? Because I know you fairly recently started using it. So how have they helped you? Um, it's, it's allowed me to go mobile as far as pulling it off the truck, walking around the house connecting it to the hose, moving it from one end to the other end of the house. And it's continued to be, I, I, I spoke to, uh, I was actually having a conversation with my wife and I keep uh, resin 
at home. I keep a couple cubic feet just in case. And I've yeah, to replace the resin on this and I think yeah, uh, if I can cut you off there, Chris. That's, yeah, that's, that's one of the problems with mobile. Um, when, when you're dealing with mobile people all over is, you know, the connection there was pretty bad. Um, I think what he was trying to say is he carries the resin for extra, but um, hasn't, you haven't had to change it. Was that what you were saying? We didn't get most of that conversation. So um, is that what you were trying to say, Chris? Maybe he's still not connected. Sorry. Oh, no, I, that's not your fault. Um, <laughs> doesn't sound, uh, yeah, sounds like the uh, easy <laughs> pro has taught him to speak robot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, let's, yeah, let's do just, just kind of, but, but you know, the, the, the point, point of the water fed, you know, and again, Mike, as you, as you said, there's, there's a lot of products out there that are, that are, that you sell that are part of that. And, and, um, that are in, on the marketplace that, that are aside from NRA. And just, if I can just point that out, that all of them take dirty water, take the stuff out of the dirty water and make it pure. And everybody does it a little bit differently on, on how they work with it. And that, that was kind of, as I mentioned earlier with the polls, it's a compromise. You have weight complexity and, and all the other things. And we went to the pure DI system basically for simplicity. Um, and because of the size of the um, resin that we're using, it lasts, you know, again, unless you're in a really significantly dirty part of the country, it lasts a significant amount of time. And you have a lot of pressure coming through the, the water where if you put a lot more filtration in there to, to make that last longer, then you end up with a lot less pressure. So it's, again, it's a compromise that's part of that. So um, the, um, the, you know, it, it's, it's been, been one of those things and the feedback we've gotten so far, it's been out now, I don't know, eight, nine months, I think is, is when we've actually had that publicly out there. Mike was the first one to, uh, to basically, I, I don't want to say take the risk, but it's always risky when you have an expensive product that you bring in and you're not sure what's going to happen. And um, so I, I want to give kudos to Mike for that. So anybody who wants one of those, Mike is the guy to get it from and you'll ship that all over the place, right? And, yeah. And we have, yeah, we haven't put together in packages up on the website linked right with the Ettery polls. So it's all I'll try to make it as easy as possible. Yeah, I'll turn key. So I want to go your direction for being the first one kind of to go out there and do that. And, and you know, as we said earlier, the pure water cleaning is, is definitely, you know, again, I don't want to say that's going to be the future because none of us, I don't have a crystal ball. Maybe yours is better than mine, but it, it's definitely going to be part of the future um, as it's been growing in, in the past as well as we go through here, where this goes from there. It also works really well on solar because we get that periodically too. Like how do you clean solar panels? This really is probably the best and easiest way to do it because you don't have to get right up to the solar panel. You can do it with however long, long distance pole you have. Um, and there are a lot of things out there that depending on how big your solar farm is, you know, machines that'll walk down and do that. We don't actually provide that because that's, we're not a solar panel cleaning company, but but our the, the process definitely works that way. And so, um, you know, there are definitely things out there that can speed up the process, but you're still gonna need pure water to clean it. So that's basically, that's uh, uh, part of that. There are a lot of questions we're getting are what countries, um, selling in actually i can probably answer this one we'll address the country thing specifically offline just because it's we're talking to a lot of different people but you know what countries are the biggest customer base for europe obviously the united states um, is our biggest market no question about that um, fairly large in europe um, that, that we we definitely have a, a a lot of a lot of base for we actually have a a warehouse shipping warehouse out of Holland or the Netherlands um, that ships right out of there. Um, that's part of that. So we can cover a lot of the other stuff. Japan, um, Asia, Australia, 
um, are, are pretty big markets as well. But I would say that, you know, if I had to, if I had to do it, Europe would be, and not Europe, the U.S. would be there. Europe would probably be second, you know, Canada, the U.K., you know, all of that directly. You know, we're, we're kind of all over the world, but the biggest markets, I would say, would be based on population. China's the biggest population, but China's China. But we're actually pretty big in China, too, surprisingly. So um, just to answer that particular question. And it's come up before. Do you ship, like, to other countries as well? We don't at this point, no. Okay. Got, keeping us busy here in the domestic. Oh, no, I, I hear it's, it's enough just to figure out how to do it here. I understand. Right. All right. But because um, I know I've had that question before from, from yeah. different things, like how far. I know you ship to places in Canada, though. So at least you do that. Once um, time. Yeah. So, so that's good. Um, so um, I don't know, it, Mike, do you have any questions for us that, that um, you've been dying to put me on the spot for? Or? Well, <laughs> uh, there's the, the one question that I saw on the list there was uh, for the questions that came in from the audience, it, it, you know, the Adderay Super Channel, do you have any uh, designs or, or ideas and concepts of maybe putting that out in a different color? Because it seems yeah. like gold has gone over really well. People like it. It's a you know, with some of the new products that have come in the market, the reality of, of the image and the, the, the kind of what the picture is that you're painting for your customer when you're out there as a professional becomes uh, important. And then it's also just kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so curious if you ever thought about making a batch of different colors. Yeah, it's a good question. That does come up quite a bit, actually. Um, we, you know, we get that question too. And um, we, we have done them in different colors. Um, usually it's during a promotion. Um, and I've mentioned this on a couple of things before, like Japan is really big on doing stuff like that, where, you know, if, if you're a certain part of the country, um, they want to have that so that they can, you know, basically be proud that they have the only, you know, whatever color, you know, that's part of that. So we've definitely done that a few times. We've done that here rarely, but we, we have done that um, directly, but I get this question increasingly more and more. So, um, I, I guess uh, look out for that in the future because I, I think that's going to probably be maybe even a contest we do is it soliciting you guys that are out there listening. What colors would you like to see? Because we can actually make it do that and we can actually do that and do some promotions. Maybe we do it per year or per, per you know, whatever. What we don't want to do is have multiple different inventories of different colors. But what we can do is, you know, for a period of time, do a select group of things that that you can do that, which is a fun thing for window cleaners for sure to have, you know, a, a limited edition, you know, whatever. And then we, we still get that now is, hey, I have an original super system that was made with, you know, and things we don't even know, you know, it's, yeah, that's actually fun in this industry. So by all means, we look forward to doing it because I think we're going to do it. If you came out of the super channel in pretty much about 40 different colors, I think that'd be a lot of fun. You should yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll let you manufacture them and see how fun that is. No, no, no. I'm I'm in the different box over yeah. here. I sell stuff. No, I'm kidding. Things. But it would be fun. I agree with you. It would be a it would be a fun thing. So I look forward to that in the future for sure because that we've had that come up a little bit more. And I think now that we're we're all home and not not doing the things that we normally do, I think people are thinking about stuff like that more. So I think we'll definitely do that. Chris, um, see if we can make this one more go. If we can actually hear you this time. What, uh, just kind of wrapping up here, what, what, do you have any closing things you'd like to say? As a, as a sole proprietor and as somebody who counts their pennies and that I've, but it's not, everything I, everything I clean windows with is at a right. Even from the system, the pole, the hoses, I mean, the T-bar, the squeegees, the everything. When I made my final decision what system I wanted to go with, there was no question it was going to be the Easy One Pro. And I think as a sole proprietor, it is probably one of the best decisions I've ever made for my business to get involved with the NRA Easy One Pro. And I mean, I stand by it all day long. I use it every single day, six days a week, even seven days a week if necessary. And I mean, from the pole to the system, I mean, I've broken this thing down to see what, you know, what the innards look like. And it's simplified. It's not overly done. It looks beautiful. I've had several customers comment 
on how awesome it looks. And one of the things that it took me a minute to realize is the handle for the Easy One Pro is the same material used for the handles. Or for the poles and I thought that that was whoever did, did that part that's negative in regards to that. You guys really outdid yourselves. It's top of the line and I mean my you guys are you guys have been awesome every time I've ever had a question it's it's been answered with it and I mean again you guys are it, 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 it's an honor for me to be on this zoom call with two legends I mean that's really what it is two legends here uh, thanks Chris um, if you know I, I, I mean I, I'm Speak for you, you can speak for yourself, Mike. But, um, I mean, I, I can't say enough in regards to. Yeah, um, be, be, you know, I, I know, Mike, I, I know you don't think of yourself that way. I certainly don't with mine, but it's a fun industry for sure. And and um, just to throw Chris a, a little kudo here, not even a little kudo, but look forward to him in the future, um, those out watching, because it, um, he's going to be doing some videos and things, you know, highlighting some techniques and some products that we have um, that are part of that. And, and, um, and we're in the works of doing some different things. So Chris, really appreciate you coming on, coming on with us and look forward to doing that. In the future. And, uh, you know, definitely. Thank you. It's a great industry to be a so, You know, Mike, Thank you. I, I've said this, I swear you are, you are the nicest guy in the state of Michigan. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that, in fact, there's a couple of people trying to find it here. Detroit Sponge is a great supplier. I've been going there for 39 years. And uh, it's Jack Page. I don't know if you know who that is. But um, anyway, um, it, you know, it, this is universal everywhere we go. Like it, you're, you're a great pe person to do with, to do business with. And, you know, we're honored to, to work together is, is the, the, way I, the way I would call it. And, you know, this is what I love about this industry is, is you know, I mean, you guys don't all know this out there, but every chance we ever get together, we go to dinner somewhere and it's usually in some other part of the country that none of us have been to and try to discover the local cuisine, which always can be fun. And uh, and I know Mike has some pictures of me I probably don't want shown and I have some pictures of him. He doesn't want, that's just what this industry is about. And, and I just really appreciate working with you in all the years that we've been working together. I appreciate that. And, and I appreciate all the words. It's, it's humbling, you know, because the reality is business is a full contact sport. We're all out there on our journeys, but for me, it's just such a blast to get to know these window cleaners like Jack that said that, you know, we know it's a generational thing and, and uh, to be able to be a part of that and be out there active in the economy as a small business, trying to navigate all these changing waters. It's a, it's a blast. It's a great industry and suppliers like you, and the other principles that we have are, are just delightful to work with. We appreciate that the professional line has still been kept, the quality has been kept up, which is so important as the retail world has taken over so many things. Everything's been Amazon. And uh, we really appreciate it because we hear from the window cleaners that it sets it apart. And you guys are always raising the bar. You're always keeping the quality up. And uh, for us, it's it's a delightful journey. It's it's been a lot of fun, but uh, it's awfully nice to hear from all the customers out there. You know, because it's, yeah. it's a it's a fun journey. We've I talked to a guy just last week that retired and uh, sold his business and moved, and uh, you know he said, "Look, window cleaning is how I did it, and and I made myself a lot of money, but I got to meet a lot of great customers over the years. Just hearing his journey and his story of where he started, because sometimes window cleaners they haven't." You know, they don't come out of the school, maybe with the pedigree and the degrees or whatever, but very smart, very hard workers. I remember even after the 2008 thing, what, we, what I came away from that was all window cleaners were looking for was an opportunity to go out and do work and then get paid for it. That's right. it. Yeah. And through this pandemic, we've had customers call us and say, look, I go out and do my storefront route. I don't expect the customers to pay me. I'm just going out and doing their windows and saying, hey, hang in there. We're going to get through this and we'll be back on when we get back on. Yeah. I think it's just uh, it's it's a nice encouragement in today's world for sure. So. Yeah, no, exactly, and and uh, and 
for those of you that don't believe that we're telling you the truth, this is this industry. And that's exactly what you just described is, you know, we have pictures in our customer service where window cleaners and hospitals dress up like Batman and Superman and hang down and all that to make the kids happy. It's like, that's just what they do. And, and uh, you know, I'm proud to be a part of that kind of an industry as well. So, you know, just a kind of a final plug that if you guys need your tools, Detroit Sponge is the place to go. He's awesome. You've met the main guy in charge here. I may not be the only guy you interact with, but he's definitely the the main one. So at least you got a chance to to see him and see who he is and and buy your stuff there. He's a great guy. We appreciate all the support and we really hope that we can support you guys out there in the field because it's really about you guys and supporting your families. And, uh, play a role in that. And we've talked to a lot of window cleaners over the decades and we're happy to help you out any way that we can. So don't ever hesitate to consider us and give us a call and see how we can help you out. Great. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in and for those that are going to watch it later. Um, again, the same thing. You can always reach out to any of us. Um, we're happy to respond. So thanks again for your time, Mike. As usual, it's a pleasure talking with you. Chris, thank you for coming on board. Um, look forward thank to seeing many things in the future. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And I apologize about the reception. I do. I really do apologize. That's the world we live in. Like we're all used to. So we, we want to hear what you have to say. So you just got to figure out uh, this stuff because uh, it's, it's guys like you out there that are really going to make an impact in the industry and help us. Keep our forward, so. Well, I mean, it's, it's guys like you that support us, that make it easier, make it easier on us, the decisions, the descriptions online, everything. I mean, you guys really have outdone yourselves. I mean, both of you gentlemen have out, really outdone yourselves and, I wouldn't want to be a part of this industry without Ed Array in my, you know, bucket on a belt. And I wouldn't want to place an order anywhere else other than with you guys. So I appreciate both of you. That's awesome. That's great. Good. Look forward to the next time. Mike, thanks again. Chris, thanks. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right, guys. Thank we'll you, guys. Have a good day. Bye -bye. You too.